Washington Indians yeah. on the big league roster, and uh, it's pretty remarkable oh. what he he's been able to do. And, and you know, and as, as we said throughout the summer, nobody has a, more of an appreciation, I think, than you do. Mm. Um, you know, it's one thing to 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 be able to go up to Lake County and just throw batting practice. Mm. It's one thing to be able to go pitch, you know, an inning or two at Double A, but for the Indians to believe, for Terry Francona and Carl Willis to believe that, hey, he can help us down the stretch, that's so huge. Oh, it's an amazing story. Uh, and I would imagine it would be um, an emotional lift for him to to, bring, to uh, be back with the team on Sunday, no matter what role it is mm -hmm. in. And it looks like it's going to be a bullpen role. Um, but I think it will be an amazing lift to the team. Yeah. And I think they probably need a little bit of a lift right now. And I know they're playing the Tigers and you don't need a lift baseball wise, but I think, you know, everybody's spirits were a little bit thrown off with the, uh, with the injury to mm -hmm. Jose Ramirez. And there can easily be that feeling of what the heck did we do right. to deserve right. this kind of a season with all of the injuries. So I think that's a great story. It's a great story. Anyway, yeah. it's a great personal triumph for him. And let me tell you, anything you can do when you've been hit with that kind of a diagnosis, anything that you can do to take your mind off yes. of the diagnosis um, is, is a great, great relief. And I can remember doing the Browns games, and it was a great relief yeah. to put it behind you that you had leukemia for four hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and for four hours you didn't think about it. And you thought about it when you got back in the car mm -hmm. and you thought about it driving down to the stadium. But for four hours it was pretty nice to not think about it, to be worried about third down conversions and <laughs> yeah. things like that. And Carrasco's got much bigger things than I did to worry about as far as his pitching and his profession. But I think it's a really it's a very, very needed relief to get away from it mentally. Because it, it is. It, it, it's it, for everything that goes in the physical challenges and everything you have to do with your body to, to, to get through this. So much of it is psychological and mental, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I can remember one time um, I could never get it off my mind. I could never get it off my mind, uh, you know, having the disease and what was I going to do? And of course, I, were, I really wasn't public with it for a long period of time. Only people on a need-to-know basis knew what was going on. But I can remember it was always on my mind, and I can um, go back to a point where the Browns were having a kind of a magical year, the year they made the playoffs, and they hit a Hail Mary pass mm -hmm. down in Jacksonville, and they won a game. Tim Couch threw a Hail Mary pass yes. on the last play of the game to Quincy Morgan, mm -hmm. okay? And it stood up through replay, and they ended up winning the game, and they were losing the whole day. And they won the game. And I can remember we got on the plane and everybody was celebrating. And, I mean, it was really a festive atmosphere. It was great. And I can remember stopping in the middle of the celebration and going, God, I, this is great. But I have leukemia. And right. it's just a – and mm -hmm. it's just – so anything that can get you away from it, is you know, great. because you're in a ton of medical appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, you're always doing readings on blood tests mm -hmm. and blood counts and – What's your white blood cell count? In that case, when you have leukemia, that's a, you know, that's an important statistic. What your white blood count is, um, and it's just and it's the, a and great the, relief. And it's the ups and the downs and the okay, yeah. my number. I gotta get my number to to, to this by this yeah. week and everything. Yeah. And so yeah, now he can be now he can be a pitcher. And yeah. you know what? Yeah. He can help the Indians. I mean, especially I, I think how they want to use him in the bullpen. I really right. think he can help them. Oh yeah, I, well, I I think he's an amazing talent. He's a great pitcher. Um, Let's face it, he was pitching with it. Yeah. He was pitching with, you know, the disease, and uh, no one knew, you know, the, no one knew what was going on. He didn't know what was going on. I guess he just didn't know that he knew he didn't feel well. Um, but I, it will be a great relief. And he also needs to know that now he's under care. Right. So nothing's going to get out of check, too far out of check. And, and that was the thing. I, I mean, I, I can remember going through rounds of chemotherapy, mm -hmm. And then the chemotherapy would come to an end, and people would say, that must be great. And I have to tell you, there was a point where you were out of chemotherapy, and you would say to yourself, I don't, you know, I would rather almost constantly be taking something that's going to battle the mm. disease. What's going on in my body today? Right. It really, it really does play with your mind. Well, so it, anything that can get your mind off of it is really it's good. A good thing. It's a very good thing. It's yeah, a very yeah. good thing. Um, so that's going on today while the Indians are in action in Detroit tonight. We look forward to seeing Carlos back with the Indians this weekend. Um, busy day for the Browns, kind of off the field as they get ready to play tomorrow night. Um, 
it's Baker Mayfield's world and we're still <laughs> living yeah. in it. Uh, I, I think it was a really, it's a really cool campaign that he and his wife are doing with Progressive and that today was kind of the kickoff event for it at Progressive's headquarters and uh, at home with Baker Mayfield looks like it's again something that he, he, he puts his name into and it, it looks like it's going to be successful and popular. Yeah, uh, it's under the whole scheme that he's protecting his home with Progressive Insurance and you should protect your home he wants you to with progressive insurance so he's a part of the team the home he's depicted as protecting is first energy, energy stadium, stadium. <laughs> and he and his wife emily are there and they're really cute commercials mm -hmm. and progressive does great stuff. yes i mean they yeah. really do great stuff um so i you know I, this is just the start of it dino yeah. i mean this is uh he, i think a lot of people are coming at him with a lot of ideas. He's got a great marketing manager mm -hmm. right now that is taking care of things. I think he came into this whole thing last year a little naive mm -hmm. um, about what this was all about and how he should handle it. And he's gone a little broader and a little mm -hmm. bit more uh, intense on finding the right people to get him to the right projects. Mm -hmm. And I think he's found that right now. He yeah. really has. I mean, he did the sports drink, yep. and now he's doing this. And like I say, this is just the start of it. I mean, you go back when LeBron came out of high school, I mean, it was daily. Yes. Gatorade, Bubblicious. Yep. I mean, you know, Nike, yep. of course, and all of those things. Yep. I mean, it was every day to the point where he hadn't scored a point in his NBA career, and he was up close to 100, 100 million. million. Was yeah. He yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so. it's, it's, I mean, he's won seven games. He's, it, it, it just staggers me. I was watching on the USA Network the other night after wrestling. They had that feature with him and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, Stone Cold, look, it, it, it's, it's not a hard-hitting interview, but, you know, Austin asked him a lot of questions about, you know, growing up and, and what it was like to, to right. you know, be the walk-on at Texas Tech, be the walk-on at Oklahoma. Right. And, you know, they were driving around Berea, and everywhere they go, people stop and say, hey, Baker, hey, Baker. And yeah. Austin says, you know, how do you feel about that? And he goes, I love it. He goes, yeah. I love he, – he loves being – the center of attention and, and being the, you know, he doesn't run away from being the savior, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, and there have been too many at that position with the Browns that haven't been comfortable mm -hmm. in that position. And I think in today's NFL and the importance of that, you know, the preparation, the hard work and the leadership factor to that position, it's important that you have to have a guy that really relishes the mm -hmm. spotlight. Now, I'm not talking about doing a million commercials. I'm talking about a week from Sunday. Yeah. That stadium is going to be tense. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's going to be exciting. Right. But it's going to be tense because we're smart football fans here. We know the deal. Mm -hmm. They have to play well and they have to win that game. For everything to fall into place the way this looks on paper, mm -hmm. And you have to have a guy that's ready for that. And he's not only ready, he can't wait for it. Yes. Whereas some guys are, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, what's it going to be like next Wednesday, yeah. waiting for Sunday? He can't wait for it. He wishes it was tomorrow. Yeah. And he said, By know, the way, he's not playing tomorrow. He's not playing. No, no. You will not see Baker. You will not see Baker. You will not see Chubb. You will not see OBJ. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. No. You, well, you, you are going to see players. That's right. Yeah. Right. But not starters. Uh, Austin asked him, um, Hey, Incidentally, look. he is a huge Oklahoma football fan. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. there, there was a there was a bond there. Yeah. There was and a they, really they big grew, bond. I mean, yeah. they're from the kind of the same part of Texas. So there was there was a there was a bond there. Uh, Austin said, "Hey, look, do, you know, do you get nervous before games, or you get nervous thinking about, you know, going into play? Because the 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 context was what was it like going in and relieving Tyrod Taylor and winning that first game against the Jets? Right. And he's like, I loved it." He's, and Baker's response I thought was great. He goes, I don't get, he goes, I, I only am nervous about things I can't control. I can control what I do and what my team, my teammates right. on offense do. I can't control asking my wife to, you know, my fiance to get married, my girlfriend at the time, to, 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 if she wants to marry me. He goes, I couldn't control that. He goes, it was the most nervous moment of my life. He said, but I could control. I was ready, I was prepared, and I was good to go against the Jets. And yeah. I thought that was an interesting answer. And so, you know, he may say, I mean, now, I mean, I know for me there'd be butterflies, but I mean, he, he seems really cool and comfortable about having this bear on and this load on him to, to lead this team to the next level. Yeah, he, he definitely is ready and, and they've put a lot around him and they've put a lot into him and he likes that and he's ready to go. He's in a great place. He's got 
great people around him. He loves Ryan Lindley. He's learning from Todd mm -hmm. Munkin. He loves Drew Stanton. Uh, he loves, I mean, Garrett Gilbert was his hero when yeah. he was growing up. Yeah. I mean, he was his idol. Um, and, I mean, they, Freddie is great with him. Uh, they, he's got Tyler Tettleton, who was with him at yes. Oklahoma. Yes. Um, with him as kind of, you know, an offensive quality control guy. He's been great with that kid, David Blau. Yeah. Uh, they are in a really good place. He's in a great place. And here's the other thing. He knew he wasn't very good last Friday night. Mm -hmm. So he is, like I say, if they could move the Titans game up to, uh, you know, Friday night <laughs> at the stadium, we'll let them not play tomorrow night. But if they said, hey, listen, you know, the Titans are in. We can get them in Let's here. Let's play. The he would be ready to go on Friday night. I mean, I think that's how ready he is. I, I, I really do. There was a moment in the Jets game because uh, I was watching. That is a very, very emotional game to watch. Yes. It really is. Um, because of all, you know, the losing mm -hmm. and all the losses. And the importance of winning that night because that could have gone on. Oh, they didn't yeah. win that game. Oh, I mean, yeah. That could have gone that, on. That was a game that could have been lost at so many stages. Yeah, and of, if they lost it, I mean, the losing could have yeah. gone on. Um, but there's a moment in that game, if you watch the tape of the game, and it's, you know, it's on YouTube. Um, and, you know, they say, here comes Baker Mayfield in. the. Uh, it's Joe Buck and Troy mm -hmm. Aikman. Mm -hmm. And... He comes in, and Aikman really liked Baker Mayfield yeah. and really thought the Browns were making a mistake mm -hmm. not starting him. And, uh, you know, Aikman went over to him. Of course, Aikman started his career at exactly. Oklahoma, right? Exactly. And he went over to him. He said, I, you know, I went over to Baker before the game, and I said, hey, are you ready to come in tonight? And he said, I am ready to come in tonight. Mm -hmm. and, and Aikman said, so now we'll see. And the first play everything changed right right so i mean yeah he's ready to go yeah so he he's ready the browns are ready it, it's uh, just the game has to get here now first things first tomorrow night um the browns will wrap up the preseason we kind of gave a, a overview of it mm -hmm. last night um we found out today uh, kind of the term so to speak of kareem hunt's suspension when that gets started that basically for those eight weeks he can't he can't be in the building i mean he yeah. he's he's out of it so after tomorrow night it's more or less like we're not going to see Kareem. Yeah, Monday. Uh, right. Starting Monday. Yeah. It, it's kind of, I, I, I guess, you know, it, it's if you have a four-game suspension like Callaway's, you can be in the building, but eight game with Hunt, you can't. And it's, it's kind of strange to me, but it's it's unfortunate. But I mean, Hunt is a great athlete. I don't. I mean, I think he'll be ready when the time comes. But it's just it's. I, I, I wish the NFL didn't do it like that. Yeah, and there's precedent in this that they went against past, you know, past occurrences and past Cleveland occurrences because mm -hmm. Josh Gordon had a, you know, he had a suspension yeah. and they allowed him. He was like the first guy that they kind of allowed yes. to come back and be around the team. He couldn't practice with them, but he could be in the building and he could work out there. But it was more to, so that the Browns had him kind of in the circle, mm -hmm. in the family. And I really think this was a loss today for Kareem yes. Hunt and for the Browns to lose control of that. Yes. And that's the worry. I mean, when did this last little incident, whatever the incident was, downtown happen? It happened the first couple of days that the team had broken yes. from minicamp yes. and started their summer break before they came to training camp. And that's what they're worried about yeah. with Kareem Hunt. It's not whether or not he's going to be ready when they play. It's not... You know what he's going to do is he going to be physically ready is he going to be mentally ready they're not worried about the football part it's the social part right right and that's been the problem so that was a defeat today i was i was really surprised i thought they were set up to get that done yeah me too and it's just it's it's unfortunate and it's it's just he's got to be and and they've talked about this that that you know sometimes it's the company you keep and the people right. that are around you and and they felt like that kareem had done a better <laughs> job of figuring that out let's just hope for these eight weeks that that you know he continues to do that and then gets back with the team and can be a really you know an asset for the stretch run because i mean you get him for the second half of the season and you know you've talked about this many times it's like second half of the season favors the browns yeah. to make a run if they're yeah. in this thing now i think there might be a way around this ruling like if he came up with an injury mm -hmm. tomorrow night, I think they have to allow him to get treatment oh. during the course of this. So if he has, let's say he has a, an injury. Well, now he had an injury right. at the beginning right. of camp. Right. So, like, tomorrow night if... If he aggravates, <laughs> yeah, if he 
aggravates the injury. You see him grabbing the back of his leg. Right, I mean, right. there might be a way around that. I'm not totally positive about that, but I think they would have to allow him mm. to come into the building, and that way they see him every day. Uh, and come into the building and to get treatment. Yeah. I think they would have to they would have to allow him to do that. I believe that's under their CBA. And and, and that's all we're talking about, just to be able to see him and, and to have that part of the, the daily routine to be around the team right. is a good thing. All right. Uh, that, incidentally, I give yeah, you a couple of notes yeah. about tomorrow night's Please. game. Uh, I, I think uh, Gary Gilbert will start tomorrow okay. night. Uh, you'll see Gilbert, uh, you'll see Blau. I don't think you're going to see Stanton, and you're not going to see Mayfield. I think you're going to, they're going to try and play Dontrell Hilliard tomorrow mm -hmm. night and Dearness Johnson, the other running back. Um, I think that I believe that this kid, Cyber, might have won the kicking job mm -hmm. uh, unless he really has a bad night. Now, in the order of things, because he made all the kicks and did all the kicking in the game against Tampa, some people would say, well, it's Joseph's turn tomorrow night. But the reason why I think He's got the lead and may win the job, not only because he's a fifth-round draft choice, but because I think they're going to give him an opportunity to kick tomorrow night because they want to see him in this stadium. Yes, yes. When they're doing that, they're kind of sold on yeah. the fact that he might be their guy. And again, the biggest thing he's got going is they drafted him. And he did have a good night in Tampa. Yeah, he did everything no they wanted him to no do. No question. He, he varied his kickoffs when they wanted to cover, when they didn't want to cover, and they wanted him to – you know, kick it out of the end zone. He kicked it out of the end zone, and, of course, he made all of his kicks. He made four field goals in the game. So I would look out for that, and I think it's a big night for Braxton Miller. Yeah, and not only for the Browns and his you know, future here, but just his NFL future, I, I would agree. I, I'm with you, by the way, like you said in Donovan Live. If, if, if Seibert has an off night or if Greg Joseph has an off night, uh, Carly Lloyd, <laughs> please, you know, one, you know, Carly, come on in. Yeah. That's number one. Um, just one thing I wanted to bring you up, now you said that, just something you brought up last night and just want to make sure that you, this kind of stays in everybody's mind. Um, once this game is over, the Browns are, you know, and your thought maybe is they're going to be watching that waiver wire and looking at potential possibles for the offensive line Absolutely. and yeah. somebody that they can maybe plug in and, or, and play. And I think they are diligently looking at all possibilities. I think they are looking at the cuts, mm -hmm. but... I think that they are also, they could work a trade. Yeah. Um, because I just don't think it has come together the way they like it. And I think the easy way to fix it for them, get a right guard. Right. The hard way to do it, the, you know, kind of, we're going to take a different course would be you could move Hubbard. You could move him to guard. You find a right tackle. Mm. Uh, you find a left tackle. You take Hubbard, move him to right guard, take Robinson, Robinson and move him yeah. to left tackle. The simplest way is to find a find right, right guard. guard. <laughs> uh, but I think there, I think that's a fluid situation, mm -hmm. and that's one to watch all weekend, okay. starting after starting after tomorrow tomorrow night. Yep. Well, my friend, have a great call Thank tomorrow you. with Deke, and right. uh, we'll see you back here. Uh, no show Monday, so we'll see you back here Tuesday as we'll get ready. <laughs> It'll be game week on Tuesday, man. We'll wow. be talking about the Titans, so uh, that's coming up, and also. Uh, what else? Reminder: High school football. A quick reminder. Then, thanks everybody for your votes. Uh, we've got uh, we're going to be in Donovan Country, at least in terms of Medina County. Wadsworth hosting uh, uh, oh, Highland. Oh, okay. On, at uh, Wadsworth. Yeah, be at Wadsworth. We're not going to be at the beautiful we'll, uh, Highland Stadium. No, we will not be at the Hornets Nest, but okay. uh, we will be. Uh, Munch and I will be in Grizzly Country Friday for Wadsworth and Highland. Because I could get you a booth right down the street at Foster's Tavern. You know, just, <laughs> oh, there you go. Just a five iron away. I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna remember. I'll remember that. Yeah. I'll remember that. Yeah. All right, so again, that's Friday night, so make sure you catch us for that. But we'll be back with a show tomorrow with Jimmy with Off. We'll have a guest host tomorrow, then two of us will be back with you on Tuesday. Remember, the Donovan Live postgame show is presented by Master Pizza. Log on to the Master Pizza app, download it, get those pizza points today. That's Master Pizza. Taste above all. For Jimmy, I'm Dino. Thanks for watching the Donovan Live postgame show on WKYC's Facebook Live and YouTube. That's it. All right.